the charge to me was, one, let's get LMI working on elevated tasks. Elevated meaning those at the secretarial, the Secretary of Defense level or the senior military departments uh, at their senior levels and the JCS. Issues that were of such magnitude and importance from a logistics standpoint that they would command the attention of people at those elevated levels. One of the first things we had to ask ourselves, what would elevated, elevated task require in the way of resources, uh, LMI resources, in terms of people, in terms of the facilities, in terms of the finances, in terms of, again, the psychology of how do people think about us and what can we do about that. So we had to think through the resources. Well, we found to our consternation that if we're going to work on elevated tasks, those tasks will normally require work across the whole organization of the Department of Defense. The logistics issues, whether they be procurement or whether they be uh, logistics management, the supply, maintenance, transportation, or operations, and so on, involve all the structure uh, that they can't be isolated if they're at the elevated level. They're going to work across the whole spectrum of the organization and the whole spectrum of functions. We then developed the concept of critical mass, that we're going to have to at least double this organization in size if we ever have any hope of working on elevated tasks in a really legitimate, fundamental, straight way. It, it was a high risk, particularly from a financial standpoint, because the only revenues on which we could operate and pay our people uh, at the end of, of each month was the work we already had in hand. Well, if we're now going to try to get up to the point where we can work on elevated tasks, and that means we're going to have to double. That means we're going to have to start hiring some people on the bet that we can develop things for them to do for which we'll be compensated. It turned into an opportunity for us in that it seemed to us that eventually people are going to want to learn about lessons and what lessons were learned from a logistics standpoint in this conflict, because it came up fairly rapidly, uh, the buildup. But certainly almost all logistics functions were involved, not only supplying them, getting the, the troops there and maintaining them, and the, all of the issues, procuring the right equipment. The mobility itself of how you both use sea and air, uh, we use the civilian force, uh, uh, all of the aspects. And so. We became a center point for keeping track of all this, and we did it on an unclassified basis. We would go through all the newspapers, the periodicals, the house organs of the defense contractors and so on, and we pulled together this picture. Then we started briefing it while the war was still going on and the follow-on. We were briefing it to people on the Hill. We were briefing it in the Pentagon. We briefed it to the White House and the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board who, by the way, wanted to classify it because it was so comprehensive. Uh, they thought this was going to give people, they didn't ultimately. But in any event, it turned into an opportunity for us to advertise LMI working on elevated tasks. And we used it as a promotional vehicle over and over and over again. We essentially achieved the definition of critical mass we set out to achieve. Uh, both the revenues and the new funding, the new funding more than doubled during that period. 